Hi, welcome back. This is Rachel, and we are going on to part two of historical fiction, just so I can give you a break. All right, so this week we're going to talk about young adult historical fiction that takes place during World War II. The biggest difference between what I talked about in the previous discussion and this one, um, basically the biggest difference between when someone classifies something as young adult in historical fiction versus middle grade. It has less to do, sometimes it has to do with the age, but it has less to do with that and more to do with the level of detail and usually that includes violence. Um, so we know that in history, uh, especially if we're talking about war, um, the old statement, war is hell, that is exactly what it is. And so in the following books that I'm going to share with you, um, there is a lot more detail about um, some of the things that are done or were done to people. Um, and even though these are fictional books, um, this is taken from what really was done to people. And so keep in mind that these are young adult fiction books and it still is curtailing some of what was done to people. Um, and so it can be a little bit more difficult to read. This, however, does not mean that those um, middle schoolers might not be able to read this or embrace it. Um, it just means that it's something to be aware of. Um, and so to me, that's really the only difference um, between these books and um, the ones that we talked about earlier. Certainly, I wouldn't recommend them for elementary students um, besides the reading level, um, although you may have a really strong reader. Um, but it's just a little bit more graphic. So with that being said, I would be remiss not to bring in one of my favorite World War II fiction books. Um, it's one of my favorite because it was one of the first to offer a very unique perspective. And I know it's one that many people are familiar with um, because they may read it in school or because they've seen the movie. And that is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. And you're going to be like, hey, my cover looks different. And that's because I'm extra and I had to make sure that I ordered mine from Australia to get this cover. <laughs> because I liked it so much better than, um, sorry, America, the one that we uh, redesigned. So I also got to point this out. And I know some of my friends got to see uh, Marcus Zuzek when he came uh, to Wisconsin. That's right, it's signed, mm-hmm, that's right. Um, and he is uh, a lovely individual um, and he was a great presenter. So if you ever get the chance, go see him. Um, this is what makes this book so interesting. And just take a look at the cover and you see a lovely little girl and she's dancing with death. That's right. Uh, the narrator of this book is death. And so to me, first of all, you're going to get a neat perspective because you're hearing about this, <laughs> this story through death. Um, and I'm going to misquote you, Mr. Zuzak, but one of the lines that still haunts me from this book is death is saying so many soldiers think that they're running towards each other, but really they're running at me. And it haunts me. It still haunts me when I think about um, what war means um, and what it entails. And death is obsessed in many ways with uh, the other main character of this book, Liesl. That's who he is dancing with here. And... At some point, we all dance with death. I mean, that's just how it is, not to be gruesome, um, but we do. And Liesl, he is drawn back to Liesl, and he, and he, and death warns you from the very beginning, he will come three times. You will see him three times. But in between that, you basically are with Liesl, and you see her life. Um, and Liesl is just fascinating. Uh, she is adopted um, by a German couple who are sort of like, 
I don't want to say they're the opposite of each other because they're meant for each other and they love each other. Uh, Papa is full of life and joy and he makes up stories and he plays the accordion and if you screw up in school, he's going to be the one you want to tell because Mama, Mama is no nonsense, but she makes sure that things work because if she left it up to Papa, things would not happen. And they live in a very small Jewish, uh, it's not Jewish, sorry, German community where everybody knows everybody. Um, things are good. Um, neighbors are neighbors. It is a good community. Uh, and then Hitler rises to power and things are not so good. Um, people who are Jewish in the community, um, who Hitler says are no longer okay, are suddenly not okay. Um, they are spat on. The, the night of broken glass happens. Um, and Liesel's papa is a resistor. He is not a Nazi. He does not believe in this. Um, and he doesn't always keep his mouth shut. He tries his very best because he knows that this is what he needs to do to protect his family. Yet, and, and, and most consciously, he is most conscious of Liesel. But he is angry. He is angry with the things that he sees is happening in Germany. And um, this trickles down to Liesel because everything her papa says is good. And the other thing she loves is to read. And so when they start burning books, Liesel goes in and she steals books. You start to meet people in the community. You start to see people who reveal themselves for who they are, their prejudices, their discrimination. Um, and you also meet some people who say one thing, but behind their closed doors, they don't feel it. Um, you meet, well, you find out how far her papa is willing to go to protect people who are Jewish. Um, and all the time death is near. I like this book because it gives you a portrait of what it was like for German people who resisted, um, or tried to resist in the middle of living in their country. And they were mostly surrounded by people who fell for what Hitler did, or maybe were too afraid to resist. What were the little ways that they, that they resisted? How did they try? What were the big ways? Um, and what was it like to be, to be a kid and to watch it and then to grow up in this? Um, it's an incredible look, I think, at the normalcy of life amid the chaos of what is happening around you in the middle of a war because it wasn't like it was something they could get rid of they were living it um yeah the book thief um i highly recommend it it is a unique point of view um but it does reveal something about what it was like for people who were living in the middle of it just i, I would say i guess whatever normal passes for um but when your country suddenly becomes nationalistic and crazy yeah how do you fight back uh the next book that i want to share with you has multiple point of views and um i love this author and this is not the first book that she has written about the time period but true to my word i want to keep it within europe okay um and so she has other books that deal with this time period but i want to talk about salt to the sea okay and then is, this is by uh, Ruta um, Sepetis, and um, it's told in four alternating perspectives. Ooh, like that, okay? So first, you this is about like towards the end of the war, okay? So Germany has fallen uh, to the forces, and of course, uh, if you if you remember anything about the about World War II and, and at least Germany's fall. Um, it fell first to uh, Russia, um, Russian forces. And so as Russia is closing in, okay, on Germany, uh, really the only escape they have is to the ocean, right, to the sea. Um, well, it's not the sea, but that's why it's called salt to the sea. And so you have people who are just running. They're trying to escape, okay? Now, it isn't necessarily just soldiers. Um it's difficult to say this, but a lot of times you, you've probably heard the phrase that uh, 
history is written by the victors, right? And that is certainly true. Um, that's why I think historical fiction is so wonderful, because it gives you the opportunity to look at things from a different lens. And this is not to say, um, you know, ooh, yay, Germany, okay? Um, which is why I like the different point of views. But what it does say is that oftentimes uh, we don't hear about things um, because if it happens to the country that's been defeated, then who's to say, right? And so Ruta chooses to write about an incident, um, and I don't want to give you too much information um, to spoil the book, but she writes about something that I didn't know about. Um, and when I, it, when I talk about this book to the people, they didn't know about either. Um, so I love it when I find a puzzle, puzzle piece, you know, that was never talked about when I took like history. <laughs> it's like, Ooh, that happened. And that was huge. So here are the four people. You meet Joanna. Uh, she is Lithuanian. And, um, we're in Poland, by the way, at this time. And, um, she is, she was kind of conscripted as a nurse, uh, by the Germans. Okay. Against her will. Uh, if you don't know much about Lithuania, read Ruta's other book, <clears throat> which is Between Shades of Grey. It's not the other gray book you're thinking of. Okay. Um, which is fantastic. But, uh, Lithuanians really had no freaking choice. Okay. So, uh, she has been, uh, kind of a slave during the war to uh, the German army. And so she's been working um, as a nurse. And so she has gathered uh, a group of people together and they're trying to escape. Because what the reality of what is happening with many of the Russian soldiers that are coming in is they're just killing people indiscriminately. Um, raping, pillaging, killing, these are things of war. People are terrified. So they're running. They're running to the coast, and they're hoping to get aboard uh, the Wilhelm Guslav, uh, which is a ship for people who are wounded um, and for refugees, and it's supposed to take them to safety, okay? So this is where they're all running to. And um, so you have Joanna, Lithuanian. Uh, yeah, Florian. Uh, Florian is Austrian. He's a little mysterious, and he's got a pack on him, and he is armed. And you get the sense that maybe he's a spy. I'm not going to go into it too much, but right from the beginning, you get that there's something fishy going on. He's not telling the complete truth, but he doesn't really want to be with these ragtag group of people, okay, because they all end up joining each other, all right, um, at some point he has a mission. Um, you have Amelia and Florian ends up meeting Amelia first. And, um, Amelia is Polish and she was kept captive and she has managed, of course, because people have been freed. Um, Florian ends up saving her and I won't tell you from what, but he ends up saving her and she is so grateful. She doesn't want to leave him because she recognizes she's in danger. She doesn't have a way to protect herself. And so he's kind of stuck with her. She's also pregnant. Then you have Alfred. And Alfred is a little bit separate from the rest of them, although he joins in later on. And Alfred is a dedicated German officer on the Wilhelm Gustav. Okay? So, all of these stories that you get snapshots of as you go through end up connecting. All of them have experienced different things. All of them have different lenses, right, of what they've lived through to get to where they are now. And all of them are simply trying to survive. But they all also have more than just that in common. Um, they're all products of the war, and they all have gone through different experiences. So what happens? Are they able to escape? Um, and what happens when they do reach, do they reach? Do they all reach the Wilhelm Gusla? Um, find out. And like I said, Ruta has written other books, um, and they're all brilliant. Um, this one will keep you up. It'll keep you up. The last book I want to share with you is one that just came out uh, this year uh, by Monica Hess. And this is her third book that has to do um, with World War II. And, um, I read, uh, The Girl in the Blue Coat by her, which is also incredible. 
Um, and I haven't read her other, which I intend to. Um, but this one just came out. I wanted to share with you a brand new book. And I wanted to promote Monica Hess's uh, newest, which is the They Went Left. I really like Monica uh, and her work. This is an interesting perspective, too. This is after the war. Now, all the books I've talked to you about all take place at some point from right when the war starts. Okay, so if you remember last uh, discussion that we had, uh, we talked about Yellow Star, and that's like 1939, right when, you know, the Nazis come in and they create a ghetto. Okay, um, we talked about even the last book I just talked about, Salt to the Sea, which is the Russian army coming. And so the war is still happening. Monica chose to write this book because she said, nobody ever talks about the war is over now. What do you do? <laughs> Countries are devastated in Europe. Everything's devastated, right? So what do you do now? How do you find your family? How do you find your family? Um, and that's, that's what this is about. And uh, I just wanted to double check because I wanted to make sure that I get the right camp. Um, Gross Rosen Concentration Camp is the last one Sophia is at. Um, and initially they were, her and her family were at Auschwitz Birkenau um, and through flashbacks you do get flashbacks that reveal what she went through so you do get glimpses into life of the concentration camp but here's the thing you have somebody who is suffering I, I PTSD seems so mild I, whenever you hear that I feel like it's overused that PTSD uh, acronym uh, for soldiers and for people who've gone through experiences like this um, her mind is fractured fractured deeply and so um, she's desperately trying to put together but what are what are essentially like holes in her mind um, she can remember everything before the war uh, before being sent to the concentration camp yet yet camps, I should say. But when it comes to trying to remember what happened to her brother, Avlek, it's like Swiss cheese. So they went left. This is what she knows. Her and her brother arrive at Birkenau. Everyone in her family went left towards the gas chambers. And only her and her brother went right. And because her family owned um, uh, a sewing uh, factory um, and they could do beautiful embroidery work by hand, she ends up getting sent to another concentration camp uh, where she does this sort of work, sewing German uniforms. So for three years she is separated from her brother and does not know what happens. And so the war ends and she is sent, she almost dies, she almost dies. Uh, when they find her, she, they, they think she's dead. Um, and she has to heal. Um, but a Russian soldier takes a liking to her. He's the one that liberate. He's part of the group that liberates her from the camp. And she wants to find her brother. And um, because he has bonded with her, he helps her to get released early from the, the medical facility she's at. But mentally, she is not okay. But she remembers telling her brother, from A to Z, from Ablek to Sophia, I will find you. How do you find your family after all of this? Now, I'm going to make a controversial connection, but it's sort of like what's happened along the borders in which families have been separated. How do you find your families? How do they find their families here? What is that journey like? Um, you follow Sophia to see. Um, there are many organizations that are set up, the Red Cross organization, other organizations um, that are set up. You find out uh, how people are surviving, how people are coping, people who know their entire family's gone, people who have one person left in their family, yet they never knew them. 
but suddenly it's like I have to leave. It was emotionally um, rot. That's all I can say. Um, because you also are with you have in, in some ways an unreliable narrator um, because Sophia herself doesn't know how much she can trust who, who she is. And she has people who help her. Joseph along the way is somebody she meets at a camp for um, people who are uh, refugees from camps. Um, and he helps her, um, as do other people along the way. Many people are writing letters. Um, and you get to experience that process of trying, of holding on to hope, but how much hope do you hold on to? Because so many people just at the end were either just shot, burned, no records, no detailed records were kept. How much hope do you hold on to? Do you hold on to all of it? Do you find a balance? They Went Left um, is now available. I highly recommend it. Um, it's the third in Hess's uh, World War II books that she has put out. So, historical fiction is a wonderful gateway, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and it can be addicting if there's a certain period of time that you're interested in. And that's why I chose World War II, because it's one... As I told you last last time we had a discussion, um, I get a lot of questions about it. And if you enjoy it, if you enjoy finding different ways of examining things, to so try to understand our past in order to understand where you are and perhaps where we're going, um, also check out nonfiction. Um, I, I am a firm believer that so many things repeat themselves. And it is important not to forget um, World War II and other things like that. So pick up a story, read, remember how important your story is. And until next time, keep reading. Thanks.